suffice it in is a super hot supplement in the longevity community. How does it affect senescent cells? And did you know that fisetin dose is critical to achieving that effect, this senolytic effect? Which dose current human studies are using as a senolytic? For that, we'll hear Dr. David Sinclair and Dr. James Kirkland, whom, in my opinion, is the greatest expert on senescent cells. Now, let's start. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Rimon. Fisetin and quercetin. Let's hear what Dr. David Sinclair says about them, and then we'll figure out how they work and which doses are tested for senolytic agents. Quercetin, uh, which is a molecule related to resveratrol, which is also uh, suppresses the activity of senescent cells. Um, and there's another one that I'm experimenting with uh, to have a look what happens. I, I know when something negatively affects me or positively. And so I, I can do these experiments on myself. So the, the one that I'm testing out is Fizetin, F-I-S-E-T-I-N, Fizetin. We showed in 2003 and 2005 in two nature papers that it extends the lifespan of animals, uh, small animals, worms and flies. But nevertheless, it's been now shown that it's senolytic. It kills off the senescent cells in the body, at least in mice, probably in humans, based on some human data. The Fizetin trials, and it's to test the, the efficacy of senolytics. And there's a trial which is just beginning. It's going to be in uh, when it's fully rolled out in 129 nursing homes across the United States. It's funded by the NIH. And this will be for uh, patients who test positive or have tested positive for coronavirus who are nursing home residents. We so in this ongoing study that Dr. Kirkland has mentioned, they are trying fisetin to kill senescent cells. This is because these cells, when accumulated, worsen our reaction to COVID-19. And the study, they are using 20 milligrams per kilo in human adults. This translates to 1.5 grams of fisetin per 70 kilo person, or 154 pounds, Do you remember the analogy of the tiebreaker in our cells, in our bodies? How the amount of stress is the trigger death? This gives us a huge insight into how these supplements, fisetine, quercetine, and terastilbine may work. Maybe in low doses, they activate longevity genes that resveratrol doesn't, and maybe these polyphenols in high doses can target the senescent cells that resveratrol can target. And indeed, some data, for example, suggests that taking fisetin and quercetin in high doses for a short time targets senescent cells directly. I'm reading from this 2018 study. Acute or intermittent treatment of old mice with fisetin reduce senescence marker. When I say acute, they mean high dose for a short time. I'm continuing. Fisetin reduce senescence in subset of cells in urine and human adipose tissue, demonstrating cell type specificity. This suggests a different targeting of different renegade cells than high resveratrol. If this fisetin data is true in humans, besides resveratrol, maybe other polyphenols like fisetin can target other renegade cells, possibly in different ways from resveratrol, achieving a complementary effect. Combining high-dose fisetin and quercetin together was never tried. They only tested separately or with other drugs, and there was synergy in some cases with the drugs. So it is possible that these two natural molecules will create a synergetic effect. It's too early to know now, so please consult your doctor before you do anything else. Unfortunately, unlike resveratrol, thanks to Sinclair spurring interest in this molecule, we don't have nearly as much data as we have in resveratrol case. By the way, I haven't seen any data on low-dose fisetin, so I'm not actually sure how exactly it targets longevity, but I have a feeling it can target different longevity pathways than resveratrol. But from what I have seen, more studies are supposed to come in 2023 and 2024. And you will find in the future, in this channel, research video on those supplements when enough data is available. Whether fisting kills senescent cells like this study showed or not, one thing is certain to me. Exactly like with resveratrol, different doses are going to work differently because they apply the stress tiebreaker like in resveratrol case, meaning the dose of those supplements matters to what you try to achieve when you take them.
So if we want to target longevity pathways, maybe we need to choose low doses in everyday use. But if we want to take quercetin and fisetin to kill those senescent cells, maybe then we need to go up to 1 to 2 grams. Not understanding the doses of those supplements can create controversy too in the research world. If, for example, researchers will examine 100 milligrams of fisetin and observe no effect on senescent cells, you can throw that study out of the window. It doesn't mean anything. So what do I do with this information? More studies will come up in 2023 and 2024 on humans and synolytics. So in 2022, we lack data. That's the truth. My thinking now is I'm too young for this. I'm 35, thin, and it's unlikely that senescent cell accumulation will be an issue. Especially that these cells play a role in good health. And my immune system is young enough to clear them. Let's hear Dr. Kirkland speaks about which people at what age benefit the most from targeting senescent cells. Uh, looks like there are situations, for example, in younger female animals where senolytics can actually do some harm. There's some uh, indication in some uh, studies of that. So I think, you know, mice generally, for example, uh, most mouse strains don't have much in the way of detectable senescent cells before 16 months of age. Why would you give senolytics at four months of age? They seem to be most effective uh, in the case of mice uh, that are naturally aging without, um, that are non-disease models, when you give them at 24, 27 months, that kind of age, when there's an accumulation of senescent cells. I spoke about my age, but obviously over the age of 60, these senescent cells begin to accumulate and cause problems. So my perspective will change when I'm going to be 55 or 60. If I do take synolytics, it will be for a day, once a year. The older I am, the more frequent I would take it. So maybe if I'm 70, of course, consulting with my doctor first, I would take it every quarter for one day. And you only need four hours of exposure to kill them. Let's hear Dr. James Kirkland expand. So it just takes a brief exposure to synolytics if you take human tissue and put it in culture from obese versus lean individuals. Four hours or so exposure is enough to initiate the process of apoptosis, uh, which takes 18 hours to complete. So a very brief exposure is sufficient um, to senolytics, is sufficient to initiate an irreversible death of senescent cells. So I'm pretty much skeptical about the idea of taking them from three to five days in healthy people, unlike old or sick people who have a proven overburdening of senescent cells. It's too early to know now, so please consult your doctor before you do anything else. Another note here is pregnant women should never take senolytics because of the role senescent cells play during pregnancy. Taking 500 milligrams of fisetin and quercetin every day, like what I've heard Dr. David Sinclair says that he's doing right now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If I were to take it every day and also try to achieve a synergy with low-dose resveratrol, I would take it in low doses, around 30-50 milligrams per day. And I would cycle it exactly like with low-dose resveratrol. I wouldn't take it every single day. I would take time off of those supplements as well. And lastly, everything I said here is not personal recommendation. The whole purpose of this investigation, with all the videos that you may have seen, is not to tell you what to do, but to give you an insight and understanding so you can customize that into a lifelong habit of longevity, based on understanding, not because I said so. It's your body and your responsibility, and you also need the understanding to be motivated to keep the habit for a long, long life. Having said that, if you love this investigation, then I invite you to check the resveratrol investigation on this channel. Thanks to Dr. David Sinclair spurring interest in this molecule, we have a ton of scientific data on this supplement, and we need to know how much to take and when to take it for a lifelong habit of longevity and good health. You can find all the previous episodes in the description or in the pinned comment. Stay healthy, stay young, and see you in the next video where we uncover the mind-blowing secrets of resveratrol and its polyphenol family.